Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we know how to come up with a volume element for spherical coordinates, let's give it a try and see if we can find the volume of a semi-sphere. So we have a dv indicated to be rho squared. Rho, of course, is the distance from the center point of the sphere to the edge, that direction, times sine of phi because the element gets skinnier at the top and at the bottom and wider at the middle, times d phi, d theta, and, oh, I should say d rho, d theta, and d phi. All right, coming over here, we now have that the volume of the semisphere is going to be the triple integral over the volume element dv. And the volume element, of course, is defined as such. And now we need to also find the limits of integration for the radius from the center to the edge. It's going to be from zero to the radius of the circle, or I should say the semisphere. For theta, it's going to be all the way around 360 degrees. So the angle theta is defined as the angle relative from a from a vantage point, typically it would be the y-axis going all the way around, or the x-axis, depending upon which one you want to choose. And then for the angle phi, it's going to be 100 and, ooh, not 180 degrees, but only 90 degrees, because we're doing a, a semi-sphere, not a full sphere. So the angle is going to be relative to the z-axis. It'll be this angle right here, that'll be the angle phi, and we're going to integrate only for 90 degrees instead of 180 degrees. So choosing the angles, or I should say choosing the limits of integration are of course very important. Let's first integrate over rho, the radius so to speak, and then we're going to integrate rho squared d rho, we're going to leave everything else as a constant, so this is going to be equal to the double integral that's remaining over phi and over theta, and rho is now going to be rho cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to r. We still have the sine of phi, we still have the d theta and the d phi for the next two integrals. So this, when we integrate or when we evaluate, we plug in the upper limit r, that will be r cubed divided by 3, plug in the lower limit to get 0, so this then becomes equal to r cubed divided by 3 times the double integral for phi and theta, and that will give us sine of phi d theta d phi. And so our next integral is going to be over theta, and theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi all the way around the sphere. And when we integrate that, we get the following. This is equal to r cubed over 3. We'll have a single integral left over phi, and theta integrated, d theta integrated, is going to become theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. We still have the sine of phi and d phi left. So now when we plug in the upper limit, we get 2 pi. Plug in the lower limit, we get 0. So we multiply r cubed over 3 times 2 pi. So this becomes 2 pi r cubed over 3. And we still have the single integral left from phi equal 0 to pi over 2, because we're integrate only over 90 degrees of the sine of phi d phi. Now notice we're getting close. We know that the volume of complete sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and here we already have 2 pi r cubed over 3, which means, well, this should be the answer. But what about this portion? We still have to continue with our third integral, and hopefully that will equal 1. Well, let's see if it does. And uh, the integral of the sine is the negative cosine. So this becomes equal to 2 pi r cubed over 3 times the negative cosine of phi, and the limits of integration are going to go from 0 to pi over 2. 0 to pi over 2. Now, what does that become? Well, we have 2 pi r cubed over 3, so 2 thirds pi r cubed, times when we plug in the upper limit, we get minus the cosine of pi over 2 minus a minus cosine of 0. Notice the cosine of pi over 2, that's 90 degrees, that will be equal to 0, and the minus times the minus gives us a plus, and the cosine of 0 is 1. So indeed, it is equal to 1, so we get 2 pi r cubed over 3 times 1, or it's going to be 2 thirds pi r cubed, 
which is of course exactly half the volume of a full sphere, which means we found the correct answer. Again, using spherical coordinates so to find the volume of a semi-sphere or a full sphere, of course, is the right coordinates to use, and this is how you use that. That's how it's done.